The Pittsburgh Shorts Film Festival opens this Friday, and this year, a Steeler's great is showcasing his work on opening night. Steeler legend Rocky Blyer is here, along with Catherine Spitz Cohan, the executive director of Film Pittsburgh, which is presenting the festival, and it, it's so incredible. Can you tell us more about the film? I mean, your story and your journey is unbelievable from the time you were drafted to Vietnam, just 11 games into your first year. You know, the, the, I mean, the interesting thing about this whole film festival and, and for the people of Pittsburgh is a, is, a, is a great opportunity for these people to come and see films from across the world mm -hmm. that'll be here. What, 116 <laughs> uh, different films? But, it, but that doesn't Sign happen all up. over. But that doesn't happen all over the country. Right. And to be a part of it in the return um, isn't because of me. It's because of ESPN, because of uh, a, a great producer by the name of John Fish and by all the uh, uh, people that have put this together. So this was a this film specifically was a process, a 10-year process wow. um, from the first thought of, hey, maybe we should do something about this, uh, and until it actually got done. So um, we did it a year ago in August. We went back to Vietnam at that time, um, and then it's taken this long uh, by the time they've edited it and gone through the pieces. So was this your idea to go back? Of course not. Of course I mean, not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I ESPN, know. ESPN, e ESPN, John Fish specifically, mm -hmm. as I said, it was, he came up with this idea about 10 years ago, primarily because um, ESPN and sports, and here's right. a story about one of our guys, and, you know, this was on the 40th anniversary, then it's just because of schedules and timing and, and, right. and, and it, that we couldn't get it together at that time, but we finally... Uh, did and uh, and spent five days. It was a whirlwind trip, flying from the states here over there and shooting everything. Um, and so they had a tremendous crew that they put together. Tom Rinaldi uh, as the announcer and and and, 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 and doing the film uh, itself, and then editing it with John to put it together. So a lot of um, a lot of details that they had gone through, a lot of people that they had visited, uh, and so it it. It, for me, it was a wonderful experience. It was a wonderful experience just to go back because of some things. In the, in the film clip itself, it was a very emotional trip, not one that I expected to happen, really, in all honesty. It caught me off guard, the emotion to that had been... emotions when you were back. To have the emotions. And so it gave me somewhat of an insight, and this is only afterwards, after the film, an insight of what happens today in the traumatic experiences mm -hmm. with people. Uh, and specifically uh, post-traumatic stress, mm -hmm. all of a sudden mental health issues that could creep up that we hear about. Uh, and I had no idea, but all of a sudden this little this little window opened up and a flood of just emotion out. came out. Yes. So we would really like to take a look at the trailer just to kind of give some people some insight if they didn't okay. catch it on ESPN. Right. Take a look. Blyer. Blyer. And his name is Vietnam. Vietnam. You know, I'd never have the chance to come back. Pure. Think about those guys that got killed. Rocky Blyer was badly wounded in combat in Vietnam. It would be an accomplishment if he learned to walk again. Learning to play football again was almost impossible. Purple Heart, Metal, Valor, Hero, a champion. You know, he had a dream, and he wasn't going to quit on it. I wish the war would have never happened. You know how Rocky dealt with that is really going to be up to him. Wow. That's right. You know, the little shot right at the end, you see the Vietnamese uh, guy. Uh, and we were shooting on, in the rice paddy, and out of the corner of my eye, uh, it would be like being in the neighborhood and there was a film crew and then all of a sudden I, 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 I see this little the Vietnamese guy stay, stop and he sits down and I evol eventually go and talk to him. But the amazing thing is that he was a scout for um, a sister company 50 years ago. Wow. He was there at that time. Um, uh, and that was, that was the company that we went back to retrieve bodies from, oh, wow. that we were uh, to get them out of the hot spot. And all of a sudden to run into that, it was like 
to run into that gentleman. Um, it was like the, the good gods and fate happen. I saw yeah. that. I saw that part of the film and, and what he had to say about it, just war just being misery and death and how much hurt it brings to families. Mm -hmm. we, we were just talking to the, the author about men being vulnerable. So right. what was that like to, to find yourself in such a vulnerable state there? You know, the interesting thing, or at least from my point of view, as I talked to uh, the good doctor Larry <laughs> before, was the fact that I had to, no, I, I said, when we went back, I said, I don't know what to expect. Only because of the fact that uh, unlike the, uh, the majority of returning uh, Vietnam combat soldiers uh, who had to repress their feelings because of their identity with that war during a period of time, when, uh, they were rejected by the American people. They weren't thanked at that. So they came back. They had nobody to talk to, n no place for an outlet. I came back to a high profile business and so they made me talk about it. So mm -hmm. I at least uh, cleansed my soul to some degree. But then I talked about it and they couldn't stop me for 40 <laughs> years thereafter. It was, a, you know, it was a story that became a story, good. became it's, it's, a story that yeah. became a story. And so I'm going, I'm saying, I, I've dealt with every demon I think that ever possible there. And then all of a sudden to have that emotional uh, experience in that rice paddy. And it came out of left field and I didn't know where it came from. It came from the bottom of my soles all the way up through uh, in the internal part of my body. And it just, it was a, an emotional breakdown. Gave me some insight maybe afterwards of what, uh, as we were talking about, what uh, emotions that we have that men don't necessarily deal with mm -hmm. uh, on a constant basis, like the good doctor was talking about. Yeah. Well, I know The Return was selected as best documentary in the LA International Shorts Film Festival. You're also eligible to win an Oscar for this, Yeah, it's too. pretty incredible. I'm excited for the film. Um, for us, it was a really funny story. Um, uh, my programmer, Paul, who lived in Cleveland, but is a lifelong Steeler fan, uh, got sent Well, he the couldn't be a Browns fan, right? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> another story. Well, he, he was born here, but he, he's, anyway, yeah. he's a lifelong Steeler fan, <laughs> happens to live in Cleveland. And he was sent all the winners from um, LA Shorts. Mm -hmm. So he puts in the documentary, he was actually traveling at a film festival at the time, it's late night, he comes home from screenings, he puts this in, this film, and the first thing he sees is Rocky Blyer. He, he literally texted me, OMG, 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 can you talk? <laughs> so as it turns out, he couldn't find the film anywhere. He couldn't find it. He was panicking to try to find the film. They had submitted the film to Pittsburgh Shorts. That's great. Because John Fish wanted to play Pittsburgh. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we're the second film festival to show it, and we're yeah. thrilled to do well, so. Well, Catherine, I know that you have a great lineup, a lot of different, over 100 movies, 100 116. shorts. So, uh, and we have the full list of that online. So thank you guys thank you so much, much for joining You're us welcome. today. Good to see you. Yeah. Again, you don't want to miss opening night with Rocky Blyer at Pittsburgh Shorts Film Festival. That's this Friday at the Southside Works Cinema. The festival continues through November 7th with a lot of really spectacular films. Look for the full schedule and of uh, films and related programming at pittsburghtodaylive.com.